My tip for anyone who's like, I don't even know where to start, is to remind you that inequalities behave in many ways just like equations. Inequalities behave just like equations in many ways. For instance, you can see the very first thing that Wise has done is subtract 4 from both sides, which is just like something you would do for an equation, right? After he's subtracted 4, you can see on the next line, he's even said what he's done on every step. He's subtracting 2x from both sides, and that's also something you do in an equation, also fine. Uh, when he gets to that point, this is a good color to choose, he's got this. This is what he's got here. Minus 7x on the left hand side is less than negative 11. Okay? And so far he's just treated it like an equation. Now he does one last thing, and this shows one of the differences between inequalities and equations. What's he done? You can see it underneath here. He has, that's, that's division by negative 7. Okay? Now here's where I'm just going to suggest be careful, okay? because the line that I've circled in green, which as I wrote, is correct. But once you include this, the division, it's not correct anymore. He's fixed himself up, because what's the difference? Here, have a look. The sign, the inequality, has changed direction, right? So he knows what he's doing. However, he's communicated a little bit blurry here, because even though this top part is right, once he applies the next bit, he has to change the inequality. But this is exactly right. This is perfect. So he has solved the inequality. Uh, he has made x the subject, x is bigger than 11 on 7, and here's his number line. Uh, it's got the most important number there, 0. Uh, what is 11 over 7? It's, it's 1 and 4 sevenths, right? So that's why you can see it's, it's pretty close to between halfway between 1 and 2. I'm pretty happy with that, okay? Last little point to mention, uh, this circle is hollow. Why is that? Because, because that number, 11 on 7, is not included. Uh, if we were to change the question, how could I change the question so your answer would have to have a filled circle? What would I do, Isabel? Put, um, that sign the number. Yeah, so if right at the beginning, if it had been this, yeah, if it was less than or equal to, then all the way through it would be or equal to, or equal to, or equal to, in which case 11 on 7 would be included and we'd color it in. So it's not, which is why that's perfect. Good job. Okay. Now let's have a look at this next one. Now, it's a bit tricky because when you look at it, there aren't many clues in the question if you don't remember how to do these. The question itself is not very helpful because you're like, it's just a bunch of uh, random gobbledygook sort of terminology. Maybe you don't remember what rationalizing means. These numbers here, the square roots, they are irrational. Why do we call them irrational for? Yeah, the square root of three. You can't write it as a fraction, as something over something, with just whole numbers. You can get close, but you can never get exactly on. Okay? So they're irrational, and we want to make them rational. So uh, Isabel's done this. Okay? Now this, this here is a really important step, and some of us didn't remember um, what it was. In fact, I should include the multiplies. What has she done? This has a name. She's multiplied by a particular thing, but not just anything. She hasn't chosen something randomly. What is it? It starts with a C? It's the conjugate. Very good. So if you didn't remember that, maybe in your working you should label that. That's the conjugate. In other words, it's the denominator, but look, it's changed a little bit. It's pluses instead of minuses. Okay? She's done the top and the bottom. Why is that? Why is she multiplied twice? Yeah, if you want a fraction to stay the same, if you want a half to stay a half, then if you multiply by a number, you have to do the same to the top and the bottom. Otherwise, it's not a half anymore. It becomes some other number. So she's done the top and the bottom. Now let's have a look at the next line. Have a look at these numbers. These numbers are important. Where does 40 come from? You have a look at the working. You tell me where it comes from. Yeah, good. 5 times 8. Where does 10 root 3 come from? 5 times 2 root 3. So you can see what she's doing. She's, um, she's doing that thing. Do you remember? You all do it with your hands, the, the double. So here's one of the pairs, the first one. And from there you can see where 8 root 3 comes from. You see it? And you can also see where, uh, what is that? Is that 3 root 3? Okay, so 3 root 3 should come from this pair. Is 3 root 3 what we should get though? How can we fix that? What, yeah, this is root 3 
times 2 root 3, so the root 3's go together and make 3. So 2 times 3 is 6. So let's just fix this up. This should be a 6. Everything else is fine. Okay? So she's just done her numerator, and that looks really good. But it's a fraction, right? So what other bit do I need? Did the denominator. So let's add this denominator on. The whole thing is divided by. Okay, now what goes on the bottom? Can someone help us out? How can we complete this? We could do just what we did on the top. That would work just fine. Pair everything up, you'll get four numbers and then simplify out. But there's a reason why we chose this and this together. They're related in a special way. Does anyone remember what's the special relationship between them? Yeah, Brian. Nailed it. Difference of two squares. This is a minus b times a plus b. And that's, what, it, what does that equal when you multiply this together? It's called difference of squares. So what is, what is difference of squares? It's a squared, there's a square, minus b squared. It's the difference, difference, between two squares. Okay, so I just need to work out what a squared and b squared are. If that's a, what's a squared? Good. And if that's b, this is a bit trickier. 2 root 3. What's 2 root 3 times 2 root 3? The 2 times 2 gives you 4. The root 3 times root 3 gives you 3. So 4 times 3 is, I heard it, minus 12. There we go. Okay. So from here we need to tidy up a little bit, but just for the sake of time I'll complete it for you. Looks like that's going to be 46 plus that divided by this. Are there any common factors that we can take out? 46 plus 18 root 3 on 52, is there anything I can cancel? Come on, there's something I can cancel, right? Isn't, aren't they all even numbers? They're all even, right? So I can write 23 plus this on this, and now I'm done, okay? So that was tricky, I guess that's what happens when I make up numbers, but there you go. I've successfully rationalized the denominator.